الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم إن نيم فالله ما سوى الله بنفسند we praise Allah, we thank Him, and we ask Him to bless our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his family, of course, and his companions, and all those who follow his footsteps. Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Firstly, Ramadan Kareem to you all. I hope your fasting is going well. We're living at a very extraordinary time, a time when we have seen the entire globe, the entire world, most countries in the world, are experiencing a lockdown. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, people are not coming out of their houses, rightly so. There is a serious threat to our well-being, our health, and even our lives. Stay at home and pray at home, as we've been saying to everybody, because we do not want to spread this virus. What do we do in, under such circumstances? Allah says in the Quran, يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين. All those who believe seek Allah's help by remaining steadfastly patient and through prayer. إن الله مع الصابرين and Allah surely is with those who are patient. Many of you may be wondering what is patience. And how do we go about understanding patience? Well, brothers and sisters, if I give you a very basic definition of patience by looking at a couple of word definition. For example, patience in Arabic language comes from the Arabic root word sa, ba, and ra. Sabr. We often tell people, have some sabr. What do we really mean by this? Sabr actually means to confine, to detain, to retain, to restrain, restrict as well as to withhold. These are the Arabic definitions that we find in the dictionary. In the Islamic sense, religious sense, it refers to a concept which is so comprehensive, comprehensive in its virtue, encompassing perseverance, endurance, forbearance, self-discipline, steadfastness, firmness, determination, diligence, and restraint. Its primary focus is the self. All of those, each and every one of those traits, require a speech on its own. Let's focus on patience more precisely. My brothers and sisters, patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, problems or suffering without becoming annoyed or anxious. Let me repeat that again. It is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, problems, or suffering without becoming annoyed or becoming anxious. Having patience also means being able to wait calmly instead of getting frustrated because of difficulty. So anywhere there is frustration or adversity nearly everywhere you have a chance and opportunity to practice patience. Sabr conveys a very active, dynamic and positive quality in Islam. It is the quality of surging forward and striving, not slacking and making excuses saying, ah, I'm purifying my soul. That's not what sabr is. It's characteristics of enlightenment that develops in the heart of a Muslim and manifests in everyday character. It means that your common sense and your religious motives are stronger than your whims and your desires. Remember this. It means, patience means, that your common sense and religious motives are stronger than your whims and your desires. Brothers and sisters, Ibn al-Qayyim al jawzi who is a great scholar and well known for writing on patience, there is a book called Patience of Gratitude and I hope that you will buy it. There he wrote, when a man's patience is stronger than his whims and desires, 
then he is like an angel. But when it is, when his whims and desires are stronger than his patience, then he is like a devil. Let me remind you again. When a man's patience is stronger than his whims and desires, then he is like an angel. But when his whims and desires are stronger than his patience, then he is like a devil. Ibn al-Qayyim then further writes, If his desire of food or for food, drinks and physical relations is stronger than his patience, then he is no better than an animal. Lying, cheating and self-admiration are his most common trait and his reason is held prisoner by shaitan who directs it to serve evil purposes. The main cause for his sorry state is that he ran out of patience. My brothers and sisters, I want you to keep in mind the definition of patience. There are many steps you can take when it comes to persevering and being patient. And let me give you a few. Again, Ibn al-Qayyim says very beautifully, cut out on stimulus that feed impatience. Cut out on stimulus that feed impatience. So what are the stimulus that cut, uh, we should be cutting out? The desire to have it now, instant gratification. I must have the pleasure now, I must have the phone now, I must have the job now, I must have the clothes now. I must have it now, that instant desire to have it now. That's what feeds impatience. And if you can cut out that which feeds your impatience, you'll become patient. Ibn al-Qayyim very beautifully puts it. If you can cut out that which feeds your impatience, you will become patient. He says, take control of your eyes, for your eyes feed your impatience. You look at wrong things and you would want instant gratification by looking at it. You would look at things that are beyond your pocket, your means, and you want it and you will feel jealous and envious, thus feeding your impatience. So control your gaze. Lower it. In other words, be humble. In other words, live within your own means. In other words, don't judge yourself by the standards of other people. You should always be thinking about people who are less fortunate than you are. Ibn al-Qayyim also says, take control of the desires that follow from the eyes. You know, for example, when you look at the wrong thing at the wrong time and you have desires surging inside you, you see somebody you should not be looking, perhaps you're looking at a woman or a man, your urge overwhelms you, you're feeding your impatience, the instant gratification culture. I want it now, come what may, it's mine, I must have it right now. That terrible, self-destructive, very menacing culture that is destroying our society. If you can... Destroy that idea of feeding your instant gratification impulses, thus feeding, stopping the food for impatience, you will become patient. At a time when we are under such strife, my brothers and sisters, such turmoil and difficulty, we are all struggling to keep our sanity because we're locked up in our houses. We're losing our jobs left, right and centre. Our families are dying. Our parents and our loved ones have passed away because of this COVID-19 crisis. Under such circumstances, remaining patient is very difficult. I know that. But keep in mind that patience is the only way you can succeed. Remember some of the things patience and impatience bring. Let me give you a few. Patience is optimistic expectations. Patience is based on the end, not the beginning. Patience is long view. Patience is wise response to life. Patience is an acquired trait. Patience is victory. Patience is confidence. Patience is decisiveness. Patience is rational outlook. Patience is success. Patience is persistence. That's what patience is. Impatience, on the other hand, my brothers and sisters, is impatience is apathy. Impatience is disengaging, disconnecting, surrendering. Impatience is static, cowardice, anxiety. Impatience is fear, discouragement. Impatience is failure. Why would anybody want to be impatient? That's why Allah says, 
يا ايها الذين امنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاه ask allah for help by remaining steadfastly patient and steadfastly pray in other words you ask allah for help but be patient come what may be patient brothers and sisters ibn al qayyim al jawzi is a very important person to learn from when it comes to patience because he explains the sayings of our beloved prophet very beautifully and of course he expands on many of the quranic verses very beautifully giving really in-depth detailed analysis of what we should be doing here is what rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam said about patience he said whoever would be patient then allah will make him patient there is no gift that is better and more comprehensive than patience hadith of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam in bukhari we also find in muslim rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying patience is illumination it is something that comes from inside you illuminates you from inside and illuminates people outside it gives you a different light when you are swimming in the depth of darkness not knowing where to go it's like a such light in the middle of the ocean when it's all dark and you are lost and looking for something a such light that gives you an indication patience is like a such light flooding your path making you see the right way rather than the wrong way long way rather than the short way wise way rather than the impulsive way patience as rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the real patience is the first strike of calamity it's how you react it's how you enable your brain to respond to calamities and problems brothers and sisters patience is a virtue we all hear it all the time how do you develop it first one learn to delay gratification you can wait for that pleasure You don't have to have that phone right now. You don't need those pairs of trainers, those trousers, that jacket, that car. You don't need it. You can wait for the appropriate time and only when you need it. You don't need that food. You don't need you don't need that's what the idea is. Delay gratification and the month of Ramadan is the best time to train ourselves to delay gratification. You can delay gratification. You wait in front of food with cooked wonderfully fragrant smell in front of you wafting through the air into your nostril your mind is absolutely accelerated by the desire to eat you are salivating and you still do will delay the eating because you know your time to eat is going to be at iftar time if you can do that surely you can do everything translate that into everything money family anxiety worry fear whether it is mental or physical illnesses delay gratification there are no quick fixes slow and steady number 2 slow down everything can wait what's the rush human beings are constantly rushing around for what reason there is no reason to rush around my brothers and sisters you cannot make something speedier that which is being meant for you to come slowly and surely You cannot make something slower for that which has been meant for you to come faster and at speed. Slow down. Everything can wait. Everything can wait. Number 3, think before you speak is one of the best ways of really training our mind to exercise patience. Somebody says something, you want to retaliate, stop, think, pause and say something later. Stop before you say, think before you say. Number 4, By the way, the reason why you should stop before you say is because what is in your mind, unless it's beneficial and productive, it can stay in your mind. You don't need to say it. It's called extreme test of patience. Guarding your mouth from see, saying things that you don't need to say. And before, understand the addictive nature of impatience. When you are impatient, it gives you a false sense of good feel factor. I feel good. I feel empowered. I feel amazing. It's false. It's no different to irritation, anger and outrage. It's a false sense of reaction. Patience is the best virtue. Allah says in the Quran, remember ya ayyuhal ladina amanu sta'inu bis-sabri wal-salah. And seek Allah's help through patience and prayer. And patience is ultimately the only key you have to success. Number 5, change the way you react to pain and and, and discomfort. often people become impatient because they've got pain discomfort they don't like how they feel change the way you react to it 
take more control of it. Don't let it drive you. Pain and discomfort could be a smoke screen. Whereas if you are in control and if you start processing them differently, believe you me, you will find patience coming to you easily. Take quick reality check on areas of influence against areas of concern. What can I really change and what can I not really change? What am I just wishing for? I may not be able to change that. Why am I wasting my time? I should focus on things that I can change. And finally, always remember Allah is watching you. Always remember that. So wherever you are, whatever you're going through, whether you're having difficulty at work or no job because no finance coming, you're worried about money, you don't have a house, you're worried about future of your family, of your children, you're worried about this, worried about that. Remember what Allah says in the Quran. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sta'inu bis sabri wa salah. And seek Allah's help in everything through being steadfastly patient and through prayer. May Allah enable us to learn about patience and learn about prayer. Pray, pray, pray. But prayer on its own isn't enough. That's why learn patience first. Do your bit and Allah will do his. May Allah protect us, forgive us, strengthen us. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.